Hi, my name is Robin and I'm a filmmaker and photographer based on Vancouver Island in British Columbia. If my accent hasn't betrayed me yet, uh, I'm from France. And today I want to talk about five accessories I use for, uh, for film photography. I started shooting film in 2012. I remember probably a role of Fuji Superior 200 that my brother was shooting at the time. And uh, probably snuck the camera out and shot the last five exposure, which I butchered, you know, underexposed, soft focus, you name it. It's not until I moved to Canada in 2014 that I started really shooting film. But here's why you're here. So those five accessories are pretty random. I got some of them actually quite late in the game and uh, I wish I had got them sooner. <laughs> First of all is this uh, Matin Matin uh, film retriever. So it's actually it's like this. So you've probably seen this in your local camera stores if they sell like uh, film equipment and wonder what the heck it is. Well, it's actually really helpful. It, it's, it has a little like plastic tongue here. And that allows you to uh, retrieve the film lead from a, a film roll. So uh, here, for instance, this one is empty because I've already developed it, but pretty simple. You basically just bring this little tongue here inside the, the casket slots here. And then there are like two little lever here, and then you pull one and then you rewind the film in the casket and then that will relieve the lead. So this is really helpful because I don't have a dark room. I developed um, in my kitchen. <laughs> And uh, normally you would use a, a film casket openers, which is basically like a beer can openers. And you would open the you would open the bottom of the, the film roll and then leave the film leaders, pass it again to the, to the little slot here and cut, cut the lead and load your roll onto your, your spool. But what I found is that I like to keep those, I don't know, for because they're cute, um, but also it's much easier that way for me. The second reason why you may want one of those is uh, to actually toss into your backpack and bring it with you on location. You never know when you might need to reload a film roll. Happened to me last year, I was on a shoot and I brought this camera along or the other one and I forgot there was already a film roll inside that I loaded probably like a few months before and totally forgot about it. There I am and I'm trying to load the film and I see there's already <laughs> a roll inside. So yeah, I knew those, those first exposures were ruined. Kind of cursed myself for a little bit there, rewinded the film and say, yeah, well, this film is wasted. But then I recall that I had one of those and uh, I was able to, you know, retrieve the, the film lead and uh, reload that uh, roll inside the camera. So obviously the first like six, seven exposures were ruined and then shot the, 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 the role normally and it, it went just fine and that would have been a bit more difficult to do without or even impossible maybe there was a way but I don't know it without this one they go for around $25 uh, Canadian so around I guess $19 US they're really helpful uh, I would highly recommend you get one of those you never know when you might need it and if you develop your film at home this is a much better method than just you know wasting the, the, the bottom of, of the reel. The second item on our list can seem pretty obvious, but uh, you'd be surprised how many people just don't organize a film negatives. And so yeah, this is, is it's two in one actually. This is a just like a negative film sheets that will hold your, your negatives. Sorry for the noise. And uh, a binder basically. This is from which brand? Hammer, made in Germany. Uh, it's a really basic binders, uh, you know, with like those four rings. And then there's a little index in the front. And uh, that really helps because I, from the get-go, I always wanted to have my negatives uh, organized and kept safe somewhere. The thing about film negatives is that uh, it's something that you can actually touch and you can damage. And uh, a film negative that you, you might scratch or bent is going to be ruined forever. So you really want to make sure that you keep your negatives, you know, organized and safe. And uh, if you develop your film at uh, the lab, you uh, you can ask them actually to cut the film. I like those cutting in six because I get I get I get one pages. So my first five are like six, and then two last one are four. The reason why four is because they're easier to grab and to scan later on. This also allows me to keep a everything organized. Uh, on on top of those sheets, you can write uh, some information such as the dates and uh, descriptions. Uh, so here, for instance, on this roll, I know this is like my black and white roll number 43. Um, and this system will be the same on my, on, my, on my computers and on Lightroom. So now I know 
that uh, black and white 43 was shot on a Nikon F3. Uh, it was a Kentmere Pan 400. And when I do scan, I also scan with the correct sequence, so I know that negative number five is the series would be um, amanit falls. The third item on our list is also kind of like to keep everything organized. Um, those are little field notebooks, actually not the brand field notebooks, but they're film field notebooks and they're made by shoot film co it's a company that they do like apparels and they shoot they sell films and other film stuff uh, i got those when they got those actually in 2017 uh, they come in pack of two and they're called photo memo standard editions and what i love about those is that they have an index first and um, you can basically Write, it's already pre-formatted for you to write the data about your film. Um, so you have the number of the roll, uh, the start date, end date, what camera you use, the lenses, the film, uh, the subject, location, so on and so on and so on. You have enough room here to write uh, small descriptions or the settings for each exposure, which it can get really, really slow and it can slow down your process. But sometimes that's maybe the reason why you want to shoot film is just take it slow. Uh, now, if you shoot like a roll, a roll an hour, then that probably won't be very useful on locations. That being said, you can also use it once you get your film back. All right, the fourth item is actually the fourth item we're going to stay in the developing. This black here, which should ref not actually reflects a bit of the light, but inside it's, it's a changing bag. Basically, it's a Parison changing bag. So it's basically squared with two little holes for your you know, for your pause. So the reason why I, I use one of those is that I don't have a dark room anymore. I don't have a space here for a dark room. And I grow very tired <laughs> of having to barricading my bathroom with, you know, with a um, garbage bag and all of that to keep the light out. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, they're, at the beginning, they're a bit of a pain to use because obviously you don't see what you're doing and you're still in a, in a, in a small space. Uh, that's, this is like the large one. It comes in three sizes. I have small, medium, and large, I believe. Uh, I would suggest to get the large because you need room inside, especially when you don't really know what you're doing at first. It can be really helpful. And um, you'll be more comfortable if you, when you have to bring, you know, your, your, your film tank for developing and that type of things. I remember a couple of years ago, I was doing uh, the photographer on set for, um, for a film shoots uh, in Northern Ontario, middle of the winter. So it's minus 40 degrees Celsius. I was shooting film. Anyway, I was shooting, reloading, shooting, reloading, trying to capture the guy skating. And I believe on the fourth time I heard like a snap. Fortunately, there was a bathroom in there that was like fully dark and the film had snapped inside. Like literally it just snapped. I don't know why uh, it just snapped. Uh, and I already had like shot like over half of it. I could at least save the film, uh, which was exposed and sent to a lab. And the other reason as well is for, like I said, for motion pictures. If you are wanting to shoot uh, some 16 mil, most of this film will need to be loaded uh, in complete darkness. I have, I have an old one here from school, actually. It was a Kodak Tri-X, but it was reversal film, which needs to be loaded in full darkness. I believe there are some of those films which are color uh, and daylight balance that can be loaded uh, in daylight. If you're not sure, it may as well like load it uh, in complete darkness. So. Have one of those. If you know you're gonna shoot film, just bring one of those or maybe have it in your car or something. It can it can help you. And the final item is for shooting purposes. Uh, I can't, I got that last year. I can't believe I didn't get it like so much earlier. It would have helped me in tons of situations, but you know, yeah, you learn every day. And this thing is a mechanical shutter release by JJC. Great thing, it's, it's mechanical, it's universal. It's almost universal. Uh, it can be used in plenty of different brands. It can be used on Nikon, Minolta, Leica, uh, that I know for a fact. Uh, on the website, it also states Fujifilm, uh, I'm sure some of the older Canon as well. They are also very simple. Uh, it's basically a little button here. You have what I call the needle, and that will actually release the shutters on cameras. On this Nikon F3T here, one, it's not Nothing to do with uh, the shirt, it's to do with the camera. It um, This camera won't work without a battery. It's one of those. It has like a aperture priority mode, which is great. But if the battery is depleted or gone, you can actually still release the me me mechanical shirt, which is here, at 1 60th of a second. But this won't work with it. I don't know why, which is kind of a pain. 
Anyway, so there's a battery in there. It's basically simple. Here you can see the needle is up, so you don't want to load it like this. So you just have to release. Ooh, stay with us. Release here, the needle is gone. And then you simply have to thread in, uh, and then it's simple. You have like, now it's like loaded, and boom. And I said, boom. Ah, yeah, see, this is what I was talking about. That camera was off right now, and it doesn't work. All right, let's try again, and now it should work. There we are. Okay, yeah, so if you have a Nikon F3T, you yeah, need a battery. Just I love it, but that's the little caveat about it. Let's retry again, so I'm going to reload. And now if I want to go, for instance, this is for like, obviously for long exposures, below 1 30th of a second. Um, here I'm going to go to, uh, let's say, let's say two seconds, so you can really see how it works. So camera needs to be on the tripod, obviously. You reload it, you made, you measure, you focus, and then you just press it. And there you are. Uh, you need to re every time though, you need to, I don't know if I'm using it wrong, if you know if it's something wrong, tell me. Uh, even though you press the, the, the shutter here, you, you need to push that back to bring the needle down. So let's reload here, and I can actually, I'm in build mode, let's say I want to take an exposure that's below what I have preset here, which this guy, F3T, goes at 8 seconds. Press the shutter, and I, there is light, like the shutter is open now. Press again. And there I have my long exposure using bold mode. That's the way it works. It's you know it's fairly simple. Uh, but this, I, I if I know I'm going to shoot film, I always take those. The other reason why I love is uh, if you really want to step down your aperture, uh, not even for long exposure, but uh, if you use like uh, daylight 100 ISO film, that can be helpful. And if you don't want to use a tripod, you can even use one of those baby tripod. You know, like you can put it into like a onto a fence onto the top of a car. Um, I, I lately I've been using it a lot for the wood. This is actually shot uh, using those, um, and yeah, it's obviously long exposure, so tripod required. And um, I'm rumbling here, but yeah, you basically have it. Five accessories, you know, you have the film retriever from um, from Matin. Uh, you have the little photo memo by uh, Shoot Film Co. You have the changing bag, very useful as well. This, those changing bag, like can be a bit more expensive, around like fifty dollars, I believe. Again, very useful binder and film sheet, and then finally the shutter release. I put a link in the descriptions of all those items if you want to get one of those or all of them. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. Thanks for watching.